Hi everybody, this is Michelle over at Hesketh Emporium again doing another tutorial for you and today we're going to be working on a notebook or journal a pouch I suppose you could call it. What I've got here is a few different options. This was one where I've put the zip down the side. It's really nice because you can easily get things in and out like a phone whatever you want to use it for. Then we've got this little one, which is the size of my iPhone. It goes over the back uh, cover of your notebook. It needs to be a hard covered one unless you make the elastic not too tight, because if it's too tight, obviously it's gonna bow your fabric of your um, book. So these ones, that one's a bit smaller. This is the full size of a notebook and that one is for my crochet projects. I keep a logger for crochet projects. So I'll probably keep my phone, a crochet hook, ruler and things like that in there for when I'm busy. And then inside the book, I will write down all of the projects I have made and the ball of yarn I've used, the size hooks and that sort of thing. This one is going to be for sewing and it's also a lovely green zip to go with this gorgeous fabric here that I've made. So lots of different size options. What you're gonna need for this is a notebook or a journal, something of that type of the size that you want to make. All of these that I've made are the height of an A5 journal or notebook. And you can, of course, put this onto an A4 book. You just simply need to make your elastic long enough so that it will go around both ends. And you'd calculate that at the time you do the elastic and then the elastic would just show at the top of your journal a little bit like that, I suppose. Now, you can, of course, make the pouch the height of your A4 booklet because then you'll be able to put a full longer ruler or something like that into your pouch. What do you need? So apart from your notebook that you're making it for or gifting it to, Lowe makes a lovely gift, you could give a notebook with one of these attached. You're also going to need two pieces of fabric, a zip and some elastic. We'll come to each of those as we get to that part of the tutorial. So first things first is your fabric. You need an outer or a public side and you need an inner or what is called the private side. Okay, I've just chosen anything because it doesn't really matter because you're not going to see it in this instance and for the demo it looks, I think you'll be able to see it, the pattern nicely. How to choose the size is absolutely up to you. If you're making one that will cover the entire front of your journal, you need to double the width of your fabric. So you place your book down, mark around it. If you want, you can make it a centimeter uh, bigger uh, on that side, at the top and the bottom edge, uh, but you don't have to. It'll only really just come uh, half a centimeter in, which I think looks rather nice. Then depending on the size you've gone for, you would need to make it a little bit longer as well. So if you're making it for the full size, you need to make it the full size of the book. If you're going to make it half the size of this, obviously, then you cut it the same size as this, because once you've got the zip in and it's folded in half, the pouch will end up being about half the size. Now I've made mine sort of in between, purely because of the fabric I've chosen. I thought that when I get the zip together on the center line, I would then have both sets of characters along the front. So bear that in mind when you choose something with a design. Okay, so that's all we need as well as a zip. Your zip is going to go down the middle of your journal, like so. You want it to be a plastic zip, nylon zip if you can please. If you're going to have to use a metal zip, what you want to do is when you come to sew, don't sew over the teeth, sew up to it 
and then jump over the teeth and then sew again and then hand stitch the teeth so that they uh, your zip pull doesn't come off uh, plastic is much easier nylon because you can actually sew straight over it you want your zip to be longer than the height of your book and you'll see why and it just makes your life a lot easier if it lands up being the same size as your book for example something like that you've got a whole different process to make this pouch so we're going to cut ours off so a longer zip than what is required okay and make sure you put it on to the correct side of your zip of your pouch because if like me on one of mine <laughs> I wasn't concentrating I put my zip along what was the narrower edge on that particular one this one here turned out I had the zip at the top now you could do that it will make a pouch and except it won't open down the full length of your bag so there you go that's what we're going to do so let's get started take our fabrics if you want to you can interface your outer your main fabric if it's a very fine fabric you can certainly put interfacing on it in this case I'm not going to do that I did on this one it makes it a little bit firmer and on this one it's got a bit more of a padded interfacing in it so it comes out a little bit softer all of them have their own ways you can use fabric as an interfacing you can use iron-on interfacing sewing interfacing whatever it is once you've either attached it or thought I'm going to use interfacing think of them as one piece of fabric so that is your outer piece of fabric and that's what you need we're going to start off with our pattern make sure if it's got a one-way design it's the correct orientation so what I tend to do is pop it onto the mat like that and have a look make sure it's in the right place needs to be face up by the way take your zip and you want the tab or the zip pull to be face down okay so it's the right side of the zip to the right side of the main body of the fabric so flip your zip over and centralize it over your pouch there you go that's what you're going to do lining up the edge of your fabric to the edge of the zipper teeth if you are um, new to zips and a little bit new to sewing or you still are a bit intimidated by not having um, pins or clips then go ahead and pin this to the edge of your work like so so now I know my zip pull is at the top so that when I pull my bag open like this if I only want to reach in for something small not everything tumbles out whereas if it's this way around you know if you're holding the book up like this everything will tumble out so that's the reason you do that but honestly it isn't going to make a huge difference if you get it wrong now there's two ways to put the zip in there's the quick way and there's the um, the steady as you go way all right I suppose let's call it the hare and the tortoise now I will show you both methods and I will show you the fast no let's go with the the tortoise method first which means you're going to take this over to your machine and you're going to do a row of stitches along this side of your zip to attach it to your fabric now there is often in a zip there's a, a line in the manufacturing process and that's a good one to aim for when you're doing a pouch like this you don't need it to be right up against the teeth in fact you don't want that to happen because if you get too close to the teeth you're going to be unable to pull the zip tab down so you've got the option of using a zipper foot if your machine comes with one and some machines with zipper foot need you to also move the needle across to the left or the right whichever side of the zip you're working on uh, if your machine has no zipper foot and you cannot move the needle then you can 
put your presser foot on top of the zipper teeth so that it sews as close as you can to the zipper teeth without sewing on it and you just have to be a little bit more careful because it has a ridge and it will want to constantly fall off the ridge it's like a camber in a road there you go i am going to on this machine put my needle left but i'm using the standard zipper foot take it over to the machine use a regular stitch length of um, 2 or 2.5 whatever your preference is and you do not have to reverse and anchor it for this step of the process just pulling the pins out as I go because as you sh might know by now with me I don't believe in riding over the pins because most of the time it'll be okay but there will be that odd occasion where a needle or a pin snaps and you land up with part of it into your machine's mechanism which will damage it so there you go that's the side now where we've sewn the zip on you can see I've kind of got onto that line maybe a little bit further away and that's purely because I can only go so far left with my foot and my needle. So I'm going to have quite a wide piece of zipper tape showing over here. If you don't like that, you can go back and adjust it and redo it. Let's pretend I don't particularly like that. I'm rather going to put my needle back into the center position and I'm going to ride along the edge of my zipper teeth with my footrest. With my not footrest, my presser foot. And I'm going to keep it nice and straight using a mark on my presser foot to guide me the same distance all the way along the teeth. Snip as you go because we like to keep our work tidy and it's so tedious when you get to the end and you've got hundreds of tails to do. Now you can see I've done two rows. It makes absolutely no difference to your work if you're sewing closer to the zip because when you flip it over you can now see I've got a lot less zipper tape showing and I like that. Right, go on. if you want to push this back right now and give it a fingernail press. So this is stage one of the tortoise. I've got a little bit of a salvage sticking through there. Now you want to turn it back over. And you want to take your outer fabric, no sorry, your inner fabric, your lining, and you want to line that up to the top teeth as well. So you can see it's in the same place. The sewing from the first round is there, and I'm now sticking this over the top of it to do a second row of stitches. I want this to be even down the sides. If you want to, you can go ahead and pin across there, take it to the machine, and you can sew that. Now, the only thing with this method, and it'll happen with the other method as well, but you'll see it's slightly different. You grab yourself a pencil or a pen. You can't see this at the end. You want to find the zipper teeth. I do that with my nail, and you can push along the edge of where the zipper teeth are. If you've got a type of fabric that leaves a mark like this one does, great. Then that's all you have to do. If not, draw a line along the zipper teeth with your pencil. Now, in most sewing, wherever the pencil mark is, is where you want to sew. In this case, this is the mark that says, don't sew this close to the zipper teeth. All right. Take it over to the machine and repeat the process that you've done. In other words, you're sewing over the stitches that you have already done to get your second layer of fabric attached. That's what we are doing right now. I think I've strayed off my 
straight path a little so my zipper tape won't be as straight as I would have liked it but for this demo I'm going to not be unpicking anything unless it's drastically wrong so there you go we've now got a row of stitching through the lining through the zipper and through the main fabric as well so what we want to do now is open that up and press this lining away from the zipper tape uh, the teeth because you know that jacket of yours that you always get the lining stuck in the teeth and the zip won't go up and down well that's why it's because it's loose or it's too close to the zipper teeth and the zip pull so we're going to just stretch it away a little bit from the teeth and give it a finger or a nail crease you can absolutely take this to the sewing the sorry the iron and you can iron it but don't iron over your nylon teeth because at this point if you melt the teeth you have to start all over again so just try and keep away from the nylon teeth so you've now got one half of your uh, zip in and what you want to do before you do anything else because we're going to top stitch now does my zip work if you've got too close to the teeth your zip won't pull up or down so you have to unpick it and do that whole exercise again now we're going to go back to the machine and we're going to top stitch about two millimeters or so away from our seam edge here where the teeth are and that is going to hold that lining out of the way of the zipper pull use a guide somewhere on your foot to give you the perfect distance that you can aim towards throughout the whole process and remember what it is get used to it on your machine because that's always going to be the perfect place for you to top stitch and once you're used to that honestly it becomes second nature you don't really even have to look there we have it we've got a nice row of top stitching along there one side of our zip is now completed we know it works it's the right way up and now we are going to do the second part we take our fabric main one at this case and we line it up across the top of the zip on the opposite side that we haven't stitched yet you want this side of your fabric to be even you can see here my lining is a little bit bigger but that's fine it's not going to bother it at all and then this side line it up as well and line it up along the teeth remember we talked about the uh, hair and the tortoise so this is the one where the hair is in a hurry and wants to get this done super quickly for the tortoise he would have put a line here first which we're going to do anyway as well find the teeth and just put a line down the teeth so that you know where to avoid sewing so I've got my line there the difference is that I am going to flip this over I'm going to take the lining and I'm going to put it to the top of the zip as well down the opposite side at this point I'm going to scooch it up a millimeter or two more if you have a look here my lining is a tiny bit smaller than my outer and there's a very good reason for that which I'll come to in a bit we take the pins out and we reinsert them through all three layers so we've got the outer the zip and the lining all sandwiched together like that I did a line on this side but quite frankly this is going to be much easier to see so I'm going to run my finger along there and along there and you can see uh, this material is really nice because it actually gives it a sheen when you do that it's a bit like mercerizing I suppose there you go so now I know where to avoid you're taking this over to the machine and you're going to sew across the zip again in the same way we did the last time 
take your pins out as you go slow and steady if you don't have a presser foot but I actually may be stitching closer to the teeth on this one than I did on the other side the only difference is that you have less tape showing which is not perfect but it will do very nicely now you've got all of your layers together what you should have is a tube here with your lining attached to the tape of the zip and you have a tube here so you've got a figure of eight or an infinity sign with the two and that's correct okay that is exactly how it should be what you do now is you reach into the main fabric and you turn this the right way around if you're making a really narrow one which I did for my register which only holds one pen then you can undo the zip before you turn it over it'll make it a lot easier for you you what you want to do then is put your hand back in and open up the lining as well so that the two are sitting on top of each other and they're nice and flat so I put my hand in splay my fingers out and I pull through so that my lining and my main fabric are now nicely together same thing we did earlier with the other side we want to crease our main fabric away from the zip let's get rid of some of these so they don't go into the teeth check my zip is working and it is flip this around check that my lining is away from the teeth and we are going to go and repeat our top stitch on the second side of the zip now there are so many ways to insert a zip this is simply one way that is really easy for making a pouch and it's a good way for you to experiment with zips and get less nervous about the thought of putting in a zip because I think a lot of people when they start to sew think oh gosh I can't do a zip and uh, let me tell you I still get them wrong and so don't let it worry you just forge ahead and eventually you'll get better and better at it so I've done my top stitching on both of these pieces I'm ready for the next step I want to zip this up partially and we are going to turn it back to the wrong side you must keep your teeth open at this point and the reason for that is because if you have a zip like this one which has got a little tab on it well this one doesn't actually but a lot of zips have a little tiny little pointed tab on them that goes into a hole and what it does is it locks your zip from going down that annoying pair of trousers where the zip keeps coming down that's what keeps happening they have those on trousers and, uh, and skirts and things so that is going to make it very awkward for you to open your pouch after the next step is done so what we want to do now is make a mark for the center line this is only if you're going to put the zip by the way in the center of your pouch so I'm going to just put a tiny little nick over there you can use a pen or a pencil and mark that center line line up your teeth on the opposite side pull your layers nicely and make another mark to indicate the center if you're going to do a center zip you're going to center the teeth of your zip up on those two marks you've just made like that okay now we need elastic take your journal measure one centimeter extra on each side of the journal like that approximately and snip that off and that is the length of elastic that you want a little bit longer than your journal you're going to feed that through the middle of your work inside 
Okay, and this is the only part that I'm going to make it slightly different because I'm going to put my zip on the side instead of in the middle, a little bit like this one rather than this one here. So that's a personal preference for you. I'm going to drag my actually you know what I've spent so much time making sure my figures are nicely in the middle I'm not going to do that I am going to leave the zip in the middle so I place my elastic on top of my center mark and then I place my zip on top of that I flatten it out pin it if you want to so that nothing moves take it to your machine and sew across here from there all the way across you can if you want to backstitch but there isn't absolutely a need for it because your next few steps are going to uh, encase that seam so it doesn't come out anyway when you get to your zip just slow down a little bit give your machine a little bit of time to get over the slightly thicker section and then straight off the other side and there you have one side done this is where I was saying if you're using a metal zip make sure you stop before the teeth and start again and then you need to hand stitch that otherwise your zipper pull will just fly off the end repeat that process on the other side grabbing your elastic making sure your elastic isn't twisted because you want it to lie flat in the book line your elastic up with your little notch like so and put your zipper teeth in the middle of that now if you're making this for an a4 your elastic's going to be longer so you're going to have a, a section that will be tucked into here so line that up put the teeth into the center like that the teeth must not overlap and they must also not have a big gap they must just touch each other but equally they mustn't have a bubble here this must be flat so the zip rides perfectly along there and one of the little tricks I taught people um, on the weekend when we did this for the sewing group in Wigan I showed them how to just take a little piece of sellotape and stick it over the top there or you can use your clips repeat that stitch along here same sort of seam allowance it can be a centimeter if you want your pouch to be a little bit tiny a little bit smaller you can increase the size of your seam allowance a little slower over the teeth and then finish it off by the way, these amazing scissors that you can see me using here are from, um, this is Wilkinson by William Whiteley and Son. And they're one of the last, the, there's two scissors makers left in Sheffield. And they make some of the best scissors in the world and they're all made by hand. Honestly, if you want a gift, I cannot recommend them highly enough. They are absolutely remarkable and you will not regret buying them. So there you have it, you've got your two pieces in. Now, don't do this next step with your fabric scissors, please use some paper scissors. We're going to trim this end off, and we're gonna cut straight through our zip to get rid of the extra length, which we now don't need anymore. So I've cut it back to about a centimetre on each end and I do have some strays which I will get rid of because now if you're not bothered about all of these scraps it's just for you. I don't recommend it but you could just leave the pouch as it is because it's finished. If you're going to gift it to somebody you can put some bias binding on it or what I do is I get some self binding which interestingly I forgot to bring across. I'm gonna grab some quickly over here, my apologies. Here we are. And I'm going to cut a couple of strips. This is probably too narrow, but you know what? 
for the thumb, it'll do the job. Okay, let's get rid of that. The other thing is you can, of course, just zigzag the edges. If you zigzag the edges, it will look just as nice and you won't see it. Two methods of applying this. I'm going to show you my preferred method. Put your pouch onto the bias tape, which is facing upwards. Fold one edge in. If you want to, you can pin that in place. I don't bother most of the time. And you want this one to be about two centimeters longer because it's the thickness of the, the pouch, you know, you're losing some of your fabric when you turn it around the corner. So you don't want it to be a tiny little piece like that. So these are the two methods. There's method, this is method one and my preferred method. Fold it over so that you have your tape like that. The other method is to simply put your tape down, uh, put your work on top of it like that, snip it with a little bit of an overhang and sew it. We're going to sew straight across the stitches we've already done to enclose that edge. You can see this is why you don't need to do your backward and forward um, tacking because it's going to get an extra row of stitches for the binding anyway. So if you're not binding, I suppose the thing is then you should be doing uh, your tacking at the beginning and the end. That's the one side done. I'm now going to do this side where it's folded over already. Some of you already figured this out, obviously. You'll see why I like this method in a second. Let me get to the end. Bear in mind that if you're using bulky fabrics, that zip's going to be a very bulky area. So don't put your machine under too much pressure unless you know it can cope. So there's the two attachment processes. This one, you flip it up. This is way too small, so I'm going to have to cheat um, and not fold it under. Normally I would fold it under and then I would flip this over. And I could still do that, but I'll have two rows of stitches showing. But we'll do that anyway. So then you fold in the side. I bring it away from the seam a little bit. And then you bring this section down. So you've got that piece and now you bring that down like that and you repeat that on the other side and you sew over the edge so i'm back at the machine to stitch down that binding really your binding should be about five centimeters wide to give you a nice uh, fold over in this case, I definitely haven't given myself enough width, but that was because I was unprepared. But it's fine. It'll look lovely anyway when we get to the end. So I'm tucking that second side in, which is a bit more of a challenge on the fly. If you'd pinned it beforehand, then you wouldn't have that issue. So you've now got a lovely bound edge where you had uh, an uneven area. So this side is the preferred method. You just pull this up and because you folded it over beforehand, you have this really lovely neat edge already. The only thing I do is I tuck that in slightly before I fold it over so that that point doesn't stick out over there. And that's that's it really fold it over once and fold it over take it to your machine and you've got a beautiful bound bias edge as i said this can be done with um, shop bought bias binding as well if you happen to have you know a plenty of it in in your stock in your stash once that is done is ready to be turned 
right side out. Now that's extraordinarily untidy, sorry for this. Pull your zip down. That's why you need the little hole is to get to the zip tab and then you can turn your pouch the right way around. Put your finger into the corner and push your corner out. Repeat that on all four corners. And if it's not beautifully turned out, grab your bone turner, which if you can get hold of these at an antique fair or even online store, I'm sure you can get them, they are brilliant. They have a lovely soft texture to them so they don't damage your fabric like using the point of your scissors. Try not to do that, unless it's an emergency. And then you do so at your own risk because you could push the scissors right through your fabric, especially if it's a fragile fabric. Pushing all of these corners out nice and flat. Now, if you like, you can go and iron this if it looks a little bit creased or you don't like the puffiness of it, you can go and just give it a quick press on the iron. Please just remember to avoid those uh, nylon zip teeth. So there you have it. You've got a beautiful lined, no seams exposed, so you're not going to have any fraying. Your zip works absolutely beautifully and your pouch is ready for its book. The only thing I like to do at this point find it is if you have a hole in your tab in your zippers tab like this one does I love to put a piece of ribbon or a charm or something on it because it's so much easier to grab than this tiny little tab and I just thread them through and then pull it through itself and pull the loop tight and then you've got a lovely little tab you can grab hold of and it can be so decorative and cute as well. Now we take our beautiful bag and we pop it over the front book cover. Place it wherever you want, whether it's central on the, bag, on the book or not. And that is your project complete. So you can do your zip up, pull your zip down, pop your supplies into your bag. If you're a school person or in college or university, you can put your compass, some protractor, rulers, whatever you like in there. If you want, you can take it instead of a handbag, you could put tissues, your car keys, your mobile phone in there. Uh, I, seriously, it's endless. You could give this to a person as a gift if they're a gardener. You could put some packets of seeds into this and that could be their seed journal. For a crocheter, you could put a couple of crochet hooks or a little ball of yarn, flattened obviously, in there. What else? Oh, gosh, uh, really, tea. You could put a tea bag or two in there and you could put uh, coffee supplies. You know what? You can just about whatever you can think of you can put it into there and it's going to look lovely and what a wonderful gift i'm going to put my phone in it and uh, crochet for crochet hooks and things like that so absolutely wonderful project i hope you've enjoyed that little tutorial and if you've got any questions please ask but i'll post some more photos as well of the other items we've made so happy sewing everybody Bye from Michelle.